Hi everyone, uh, I'm making a quick lab tutorial uh, which will help you guys to solve your next lab. So this is the circuit that we're looking for today. Uh, we have two voltage sources, an inductor, a capacitor, and, uh, and a resistor basically because it doesn't have the, the imaginary component attached to it. So it's a 5 ohm resistance. So that's what we're looking for. And for the simulation, uh, we need to know the frequency. So I'm assuming a frequency of 1 kilohertz. And based on that, my omega will be uh, 6.28K. And then, uh, as we know that the impedance of the inductor, we are given the impedance of the inductor uh, as J7 omega. And using J omega L, we can find out the inductance, which is 1.115 millihenry. Similarly, we are given the capacitance, uh, capacitive impedance, uh, which is minus J3.1. And using 1 over J omega C, we can find that the uh, and using omega value, we can find it that it, it is 51.37 microfarad. So let's go to the LT spice. Uh, at LT spice, I've already made the circuit, but I didn't put the values. So as you know, the inductor was inductor uh, is 1.115. Inductor was 1.115 uh, millihenry, and capacitance is 51.37. So 51.37 microfarad. All right, 51. Should be 51.37 microfarad. And resistance value is 5 ohms. 5 ohms done. And for the voltage source, we have 79 minus 40 degree phase. So I'll go to advanced. I'll go to the sine, sine value. And then amplitude was 79 with a phase of minus 40 and frequency of 1 1k 1, 1 kilohertz uh, perfect that's done for the for the second voltage source we have 152 amplitude is 152 volts frequency is 1k and phase is 0 uh, so our circuit is complete now we can run the simulation you go to the simulation you have to uh, start the transient analysis that's what we have to do uh, let's say we are doing it for 30 milliseconds i'm choosing the same values as, as they were chosen by the professor and here the simulation will start so let me just make my window a bit short and then and this is my simulation all right so what we are looking at so i'll, I'll be looking at instantaneous power of the source so in LD spice things are a little bit straightforward, uh, more easier than uh, the cadence. So instantaneous power of the source. So this is this is the uh, I'm looking at the voltage. Uh, okay, put, let me put the net labels actually. I'll put V S one voltage source one. This is my voltage source one. This is my voltage source two, and this will be my V L. Okay right click it's v l and this is vs2 all right it'll make things easier so we can see all of those things in the plot so let me run the simulation again uh the voltage vs1 is this to find the current all i have to do is to put my uh, scope uh, on the on the element so we are looking at the instantaneous power of the source so here i find the current this is the way to find the current now to 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 uh, if you want to plot the instantaneous power what we have to do in lt spice uh, things are a little bit simpler what we have to do is we just bring our uh bring our scope uh, over the power supply hit the alt button and you see a small thermometer is visible just keep pressing the alt button and then click the mouse and that red thing will show you your power all right and as, as we see actually it tells you that what it is it it is the v vs1 multiplied by the current of v1 so it shows it did the exp expression for us and now we can see the instantaneous power 
And finding the average power is actually again easy. So what we have to do, there are different ways. So I'll discuss all the all the different ways to calculate the power. So one way of finding an average power is just to click over this uh, this thing, pressing the control button. Just left click your mouse, and a form a window pop up. It tells you that the in, that the average power is minus 232.13 watt, which is I think uh, exactly as as per the requirement. But right now what I'm doing, I'm taking uh, that average power over the whole window where I also have the instantaneous power signals. So in LTSpice, what we can do, uh, this is kind of uh, beautiful in LTSpice. So what I can do, I can take a short window and what it does uh, when I calculate the average, uh, the average power, actually, it takes in account the the window, uh, the visible window. So it will just take uh, my power signal from uh, voltage and current signals from 6.6 .6 milliseconds to 9.6 milliseconds, and will calculate the average power. So here, average power is minus 2.2 to 9.2 watts, and that's one way. We just, I mean, if you want to do uh, like professor did uh, starting from 10 milliseconds to 30 milliseconds all we have to do is uh, I'll right click here and I'll say give me the ticks of 2 milliseconds and then starting 10 milliseconds until the last that's starting 10 to 30 milliseconds and I can find the power which is 229.25 watt this is one way but actually there's another way I can I can go to the simulate edit the simulation command and in the transit analysis I can say that my stop time is 30 milliseconds but time to start saving data starts from 10 milliseconds that makes a lot of things easier because now I'm not counting the instantaneous power that area is already gone and I'll run the simulation again and you see my time still it, uh, my scale tells me that I'm starting from zero milliseconds but actually there are no transients that 10 milliseconds where all the transients were happening are now gone. So now if I calculate the average power is 229.25 watt, that, that gives me the, instantaneous, the average power of my power supply. Now let's go to the next point. I mean, we have to find the a power absorbed by the component. So it is instantaneous power of the source, average power. So now the voltage across resistance. So finding voltage across resistance, let me, let me just uh, quickly delete the traces. Okay, so now to find the the current across resistance, all I have to do again, I mean, put bring my bring my uh, scope over the resistance, and uh, the current is now calculated. If I'm looking for the voltage across R1, the voltage across R1 will be Vs1 minus Vl. So in this case, what I do, I click over here, and then keep my mouse clicked, and bring it to the next point. So when, the, when my scope becomes black, it, mean, it means that it's giving me the, the difference between the two voltages and then it's going to plot that thing. If you see this representation, v, VVS1, VL is actually exactly same, such as VS minus VL. And we can do that. I mean, we can also do the expressions, which is not a big problem. All we have to do, I mean, we have to know that it's VS1 and VR, uh, VL. So we can actually go here over the over the plot, and I can say add trace. In the add trace, I'll say VS1 minus. Then I'll select uh, VL. Here's the VL, and I'll say OK. And you see, actually, this is my VS1 minus VL, and it just plotted over the same plot, which is VS1 here. So this, if you see blue plot and red plot, they are all written. So both of the ways are okay. I mean, they're all right. You, you can use one of the ways as per your liking. And uh, so once we're done with that, we have the, the current of the, of the resistance. Now to find the instantaneous power, we have to multiply this voltage difference of VS1, VL, and we have to multiply it with the current through the resistance. So current is what happens in LT spice, for example, is giving me the current direction, which is from VL to VS. And that's why my V, the uh, VL, sorry, VR 
and IR1 are in different directions. To just correct that problem, what I'll do, I'll just change the direction of the current by saying minus R1, and then they will be in phase. So actually both of them are here, if you see the plot, but they are overlapping, so it's difficult for us to see that uh, here. So I have the green plot and I have the blue plot, both overlapping and they are now in phase. Voltage is around 147, 148 volt, and the current is around 27 to 28 ampere something something so I'll, I'll just click uh, to, uh, I'll add the trace now for the for the power okay add the trace and I'll take I R one so I'll take minus I R one multiplied by multiplied by V Vs1 minus V V L. All right, that's my power, and here's my power. As you see here, I'll I'll just take a small window to. That's my power. Let me a little bit bring it to a little bit bigger window. I'll just take. That wind. So now you see actually we, uh, the power is visible, the 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 current is visible, and they are in phase. And the the voltage difference is not visible because again they are in the same phase and they are just going on top of each other. So my red, my green plot and my blue plot they are just overlapping. If we if I bring it if I try to zoom, you will see they are very close. You see the green and blue. They are just so very close, but they are present. Okay, now again to find the instant power, what I have to do, I'll just click the, I'll just click the control. Okay, first of all, before that, so that I, I need instant power, and I'll click in here, and I'll see it's 2.13 kilowatt. That's that's the way to find an uh, find sorry, find an average power, and instant power is around, as we see here. For the red plot it is around 4.25 kilowatts but remember i mean we changed the simulation timing we, we set to start from the 10 milliseconds so actually uh, start saving data from 10 milliseconds it means that uh, it we are not taking in account the instantaneous uh, the the transient power ripples that were there so right now we are calculating power starting from 10 milliseconds to 30 milliseconds when possibly a steady state has been reached. I hope this will help you guys to, uh, to work your labs. Have a good day.